Hello everyone, Diana here, coming back to you with another speed paint from the backlog of stuff from over a year ago. Let's go! I hope everybody is doing well since I last uploaded. I think it's been about a month or so since I last uploaded on the YouTube channel. I'm trying to get better at uploading. I'm working on artwork during the week after my day at the museum and my day job. And I do hope to plan to get back into the swing of things once I reestablish a new normal with art and the museum. I think I'll dive into this a little bit more thoroughly in a Patreon post for my patrons one of these days or at least in one of the upcoming weekends uh, for them to know what's going on and for them to kind of just be back into the swing of how everything is going for me behind the scenes. Anyway, let me get into the bulk of the speed paint which is going to going to be me talking about the artwork that you are seeing here right now <sighs> so it's a lot i know uh it was a lot making for all of this to happen and there is so much to explain with this one that i don't really know where to start well i guess for starters i should explain what you are seeing here right now and it is definitely a more proper illustration rather than just a portrait or a bust i feel like this one is more of what you will see in a cutting in a visual novel i don't know i'm just trying to hype myself up because honestly i really like how it came out Anyway, in the illustration, you'll see from left to right, Akumu, uh, which is my friend uh, Mark, uh, uh, his OC, my, fr my personal OC, which is Mitsuri, and the kid on the far left is Doku. It's my, my, my friend Magnolia's OC and the little adopted brother of Akumu. I think I origi originally had drawn the skate the sketch late spring of last year or so basically i drew this right after i graduated college and was deep into the boku no hero academia role plays with my friend mark and mag and we initially started role playing um my hero academia because i wanted to do a self-insert into the fandom to interact with mark's my hero academia academia muses and somehow along the way we kind of just pulled magnolia into it so she also made ocs to play along with us i'll talk about the lore of the ship and how the plotting has progressed later in the video but first i want to talk about the process of making this piece itself as you guys saw in the video or at the start of the video i started coloring mitsuri first I had the sketch done in another program called Fire Alpaca and imported the file to Clip Studio Paint to test out how the Genieb uh, worked within the Clip Studio. And then my dad caught COVID, so I had to put everything on a hard stop for about 10 full months or so. And I only recently started to feel like there's a bit of normalcy back in my life enough to start picking things uh, back up again. You'll notice that the background is white with the characters in a neutral gray and that is just an oil painting technique from art school. Basically, it helps me gauge the color and tone when putting down my base of colors before rendering and making it all look pretty. I also work like that with the background just to make sure I like the atmosphere of the colors that I pick and how they all kind of combine to make the atmosphere and the time of day. After I did the flat colors for Mitsuri and cleaned up my edges for her, I worked on Akuma's clothes and finally on Doku's uh, flat colors. And at some point I got self-conscious about Akumu's skin color, so I kind of just left it last so you'll see him in gray for the most part. Um, I definitely tried asking around my other art friends for opinions, especially those who are more experienced uh, coloring and rendering people of color. Because I'm so used to coloring tan for the most part, like Caucasian complexions, but not such a heavy melatonin character before. So this was definitely new territory for me. The fun part was definitely trying to render the background because this is where I spend more, most of the portion of my time, basically about two months or so. Um, like you guys initially saw, it is a full illustration with a background with more complex elements with multiple trees and like an actual park setting um and i definitely wanted to focus more on the background because at the end of the day i'm more comfortable rendering people 
uh, enclosed rather than environments, so I knew I would render and finish uh, the characters first instead of the background. <laughs> so I wanted to give it proper attention to where it deserved. I think part of why I was so excited to get this done next was, um, you know, I'm coming out of my commission batch, was because I wanted to give a gift to my friends and um, B. I got excited because I was going to render foliage again and the thought of having to render nature again felt really exciting to me which is a first after 10 months or so of feeling like absolute shit with stress and worries and being emotionally dead due to what was happening with my dad and the conflict I was having with my family at the time so this was definitely an icy break for me. I also want to point out that I like to uh, lay down blocks of color first and clean up my edges later um, because it's a little bit more time efficient for me rather than to try to stay within the lines um, and also like seeing the color get erased to match the outline feels really satisfying to me so yeah that's how we went about this um, I also wanted to do something different with my background this time around I was aiming for a park in the middle of a cityscape for the feeling of a day or a day out with Akuchan and his little brother. I hope I was able to capture it. If not, please leave a comment on your thoughts on when, like, you guys come to see it. I would love to hear your, your uh, thoughts and opinions on how the piece came out. Um, one thing I will say is that I did sp spend a lot of time clean up the edges and make sure that I like the color that I was putting down because initially I had a very bright selection of colors especially for the ground where the characters are inhabiting which I felt it didn't match the feel I wanted to go for like that yellow was not it because it felt more like a mustard rather than sand or ground or whatever and also that transition where the gates to the park are with the ground felt off along with the color of the sky too i don't know the background was part of what i was really excited for but it also gave me a lot of trouble the more i worked on it i think i did well with how i sort of made that gradient with the characters are uh, standing and sitting since they're not in direct light along with that fade between the trunks and the branches where you would technically be able to see buildings through it but I'm just not skilled enough to figure out how to actually render it. After I did all that, I worked next on actually rendering the treetops. And for one, I'm glad I did watch a lot of anime and watercolor and do a lot of watercolor on the side. Um, because trying to capture and break up the, the treetops into believable shapes for tree shadows is very different. Um, but like it makes sense once you look at the at the um, at the video with the speed paint. I think one of my biggest big mistakes working on the background is that I basically had the co all the colors in one layer, so I had to approach the coloring in a very different way than I normally do. Um, I used the selection pen to just block out the treetops that I wanted to render and I basically did it in parts. Kind of like how you would approach a watercolor painting. And also thank god for Studio Ghibli art books because they do backgrounds traditionally and man those treetops for sure are top notch. So I tried to mo model the trees after, their, after that kind of style with the old school training. Of traditional background renderings and paintings that you will see in like 90s anime so this sort of kind of like helped me establish the main source of light and where my shadows will be in relation to the characters and the painting um at some point i sort of do this entire process with every treetop and bush now before anybody gets on my ass about the bushes looking like old lady bots. One, fuck off. Two, no, I didn't use any reference because this was a piece for fun. And three, uh, I have been working on this piece for three months and like it was on and off. So I would appreciate if nobody would come and put me on blast for that. <laughs> I just feel like it's like that of uh, bushes where you find that are kind of like square and round. Um, but their biological situation is odd because the tree branches and leaves 
just kind of make no sense. So this is my best attempt at it. Um, so once I get all of that done, um, I work on the fountain and then I started to kind of just mess around with the colors and I really like how I combine the colors of like the trees into like that maroon situation going on along with the with the chair and everything else um and i do know that like that water fountain looks weird and that's something i need to like work to get better at it next time um because it kind of looks like slime as one of my friend pointed out but at that point one i was too deep into the rendering process to change it and two i was getting sick and tired of looking at this painting for working on it for like three months so i decided to just leave it as is and then make a mental note for myself to work on um how to render water and fountains and everything else so once I get all that in place, um, I kind of just got burned out on the background and I got to a point where I was really satisfied with it. So I moved on to actually rendering the characters with Magnolia's OC first. Like I said earlier in the video, Doku is the little kid in this picture gesturing to keep quiet since Mitsuri is fast asleep. And he is the little adopted brother of Akumu. And the reason that we gave him splotches is basically due to his quirk. Um, he has a similar quirk um, to Aquachan in that both siblings have a gas-based quirk, but the difference between them is that Doku has uh, poison gas and he doesn't really know how to control it yet, so these bruises show up on his skin if he doesn't release the gas in a healthy way. Um, and for Akumu, he has fear gas toxic, I think? Uh, where his opponent inhales his gas, he will get hallucinations of uh, their worst fears. Um, now, normally Akumu doesn't um, get affected by this because he releases his gases naturally in small amounts, so he himself doesn't get affected by his own quirk. But when it comes to combat, um, it can basically make like a whole smoke screen with the gases, and it's really cool. Um, they're adoptive brothers because Doku basically ran away from his house and is on the run from the police because he thinks he killed his parents with his quirk by accident and he doesn't have any other relatives that he can move in so Akuma just kind of like takes him in um, and I don't quite remember the full lore as to why Akumu managed to strike a deal with the local bakery for some time that he did in jail I don't remember Mark definitely knows like the lore a little bit better than I do but essentially, he strikes a deal with the bakery, they give him an apartment, a place to live, and a way to release his gases to like pay back the time that he has to do in jail or something like that. And it ended up being a bakery barista AU with Mitsuri. <laughs> uh, Mitsuri still is in the same AU, except she falls out of love with with Mark's Bakugo and em ends up together with Akumu and initially it was like a one-sided crush from Akumu towards Mitsuri but she ends up falling with him too and they end up staying together and Doku like knits because she's friendly and treats him well and also both of them like to like bully Akumu because he's a virgin and he's super cute and super wholesome uh, so they just bully him <laughs> um so after I finish rendering Akumu and uh, you know getting his clothing down, I double checked with a couple of friends, like I said, on his skin color just to make sure that I was rendering his um, melanin the correct way without insulting anybody. Um, and also trying to make sure that it was the right color, the right type of uh, rendering, and I also um, double check that with Mara because he technically is the owner of Akumu so I was like hey is this is this okay is this fine but yeah he was like yeah this is cool so it's just like okay but we're gonna go with that overall this was a fun drawing but it really did take me three months of off uh, working on it on and off just to get it to this level of polish um, of course, I know I need to get better at rendering cityscapes and now water fountains and just how water flows in general. I feel like going forward, I can definitely take note of using more references to make the sketch 
solid enough to make the coloring better and to not be afraid to use multiple layers for the background. Uh, just using one layer for the background was definitely a choice that I won't repeat again. <laughs> At least not within the next upcoming drawing, which, speaking of which, um, is still going to be another shapey art illustration for self-indulgence in self purposes. And it's going to be a Bakumid's drawing I drew around the same time as this one over a, a year ago or so. And I'm really looking forward to it because it also has a full background with a setting that I'm more familiar with. So I hope you guys uh, look forward to it. Um, I posted the full the full render drawing without the watermark and a high definition and in high definition for my Patreon page, along with the lineup printout um, for my patrons to use as coloring sheets, um, if they so choose. I am trying to catch up on my Patreon duties as I pick things back up, so please be patient with me. My supporters through Patreon get some updates that I don't normally talk about anywhere else and also get discounts on my commission prices along with being part of a chill Discord group if you're into that. Right now, that Discord group is made up of close friends and fellow artists, so if you wish to be part of that, by all means, check out my Patreon page. I believe it's a dollar subscription tier to get access to the Discord group. Um, I do have plans to add more goodies to my Patreon page as I learn more about merch and setting up a small business under my name. If Patreon is out of your budget right now, then sharing this around and subscribing or following my social media and interacting with me helps a ton. If you feel like I've earned the subscription, uh, like and or comment and then by all means let me know. Um, I also have commissions open so if you'd like to check that out, it will be in the description below. All of the revenue I receive from patron, commissions, and donations go towards investing back into art. So for example, buying equipment to make better videos, building my studio space, and supplies to make art. Again, your support in any way, shape, or form is greatly appreciated. Um, I think that's all I wanted to cover in this speed paint video. Phew, that was a lot. Um, I do hope I am able to release some more videos in the future soon instead of just posting once a month. Um, but that will be all for me and I hope you guys have a wonderful week, weekend, or whatever your time, whatever time that you choose to watch this. I hope you guys are safe and I'll see you in the next one. Yeet!